cool little fun project. The realistic MC 1800s. And uh, what I'm gonna actually do with these is try to mock up a pair of miniature realistic Mach 1 speakers. I think that's the direction I'm finally heading with this. I think that it will probably sound fine. Um, I think it'll sound better than original. It might not be the perfect audiophile grade speaker, but I think it'll be a fun speaker. Original tweeter, woofer, cabinet, everything's stock. The makeshift crossover that's in it, it's all stock. Now what I'm gonna do, if you remember right, the Mach 1 had a big horn here. So I did find a horn that will fit on this cabinet perfectly, and it kind of mimics the original horn from the Mach 1. It's not exactly the same, and it's certainly a cheap speaker, but I wouldn't be surprised if it sounds as good or better than that old cone tweeter. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the fun thing that we have going on today. I'm gonna get started on this. So I bet I know what you're about to ask. How in the world are you gonna turn these into Mach 1s? Well, the idea behind the mini Mach 1 project is because this speaker, it's from the same era. It's a Radio Shack realistic speaker. And they share design in terms of the look. So the Mach 1 also had the, you know, the oiled walnut mirror and the same shape cabinet. The biggest difference with the Mach 1 was it was a much bigger speaker. It was a three-way speaker. It had an MTW design, so it had a mid-range tweeter woofer design. This one is just your standard sealed cabinet, three-inch woofer, two-inch tweeter. So to make it look like a Mach 1, I did find this kind of cool horn, and it's about as close as I could get to, to the Mach 1 horn and about the right size, so it's gonna fit. It'll fit this direction, because most horns are just way too deep for this cabinet. And it also fits, you know, across the front of the baffle. And it fits inside of this grill opening. So that's, uh, that's kind of my thought process with this, is just try to use what I have and what I could find. Now I want to try to get as much SPL out of this speaker as possible. So I'm going to be using the Dayton uh, mid-bass driver. I had it around the house. If I didn't already have it around the house, I would probably buy a woofer for these. But this is such a low buck project for me and it's just for fun. So I paid 20 bucks for the cabinets. Uh, the crossovers I plan on putting in here, those were 20 bucks for the pair. Um, these little, uh, tweeters here, these were like, man, I bought like four of them for probably 20 bucks or something like that. So they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, the ports, these ports I had from some other project or some other speaker. And these are inch and three quarter by four inch long ports. Um, I don't know exactly how the plan's going to work out just yet.
Okay, so there it is in all of its glory. <laughs> that rectangle I cut in there. It does have to be cleaned up, but at least that fits. So, ta-da! Plenty of room in there to get it centered. See, it's starting to look like a Mach 1. So our mini Mach 1 is coming along good. I've got the rectangle cut out for the horn. I've just got this woofer in here just for looks so that we can see what it looks like, but uh, it's coming along next. Well, I think the worst of it is over. Um, I've got my holes in the back for the ports. This was the only place I could fit them. Um, there's just not enough room on the front back for these ports. So I did pop them in the top here, and hopefully there'll be enough base built up in here where we're gonna you know, hear a difference with that. Um, this slot is now opened up for the horn tweeter. Uh, the eight inch hole for the woofer, or you know, seven and three quarter, or whatever it happens to be, it's already pre-cut, it fits a standard woofer, so that part's fine. And then inside here, we've got the, uh, the brace that I cut for it. So the next step is gonna be pretty much downhill um, assembly and testing. So I'm gonna wrap this up, clean these all off, and then get ready for the assembly. Uh, the assembly, I'll make a whole separate video because um, it's gonna take a little bit and I'd like to you know, at least be able to show you a few things that I'm doing in there. Uh, right now, um, hack job, absolutely. Does it break my heart? Eh, a little bit. You know, I wish I would have done a better job, but I was kind of rushing it and um, you know, how we get when we're doing projects, uh, but Anyway, it'll work out fine. I think in the end, it's gonna look fine, it'll sound good. So, on that note, thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next video when I am reassembling these MC-1800s.